Before we begin the session, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you'll never miss any update from us. Hello everyone and welcome to IntelliPath. In this video, uh, I'll be talking about a topic called what are design patterns. But before we begin, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. In today's session, we will be learning about software design pattern, which is a reusable solution to software development difficulties. However, unlike its name, a software design pattern is not code. Instead, it is a guide or a paradigm that helps software developers construct products that follow best practices. So without further ado, let us have a look at the agenda for today's video. Firstly, I'll be introducing the design pattern. Uh, I'll be explaining what formal definition of design pattern is. Uh, next is what is design pattern. Here I'll be diving deep into the concepts of design pattern followed by classification of design patterns. Next comes benefits and criticisms uh, involving design patterns followed by why do we need a design pattern or the reason behind uh, using design patterns in the first place and finally i'll be concluding the video with takeaways all right now that we have our agenda clear let us move on to the video introduction to design pattern design patterns are solutions to general problems that software developers face during software development the book design patterns elements of reusable object oriented software which was written by four writers they are eric gama richard hell ralph jolson and john lecides and this was released in the year 1994 and was the first to introduce the notion of design pattern patterns in software development. These authors are collectively known as the Gang of Four or GOF. Even though GOF Design Patterns book was released over 20 years ago, it is still a popular book for software developers. These writers claim that design patterns are essentially based on the following object-oriented design concepts. The first one is object composition is preferred over an inheritance. And the second concept is program to an interface, not an implementation. So you basically prioritize your interface over implementation. Although the GOF authored the book in C++ language, it is still quite relevant to Java programming. Both C++ and Java are object-oriented programming languages. The GOF writers saw common patterns in their experience creating large-scale corporate systems in C++. C++ isn't the only language with these design patterns. Any object-oriented language can use these design patterns. The GOF design patterns will be encountered regularly as a Java developer utilizing the Spring framework to construct enterprise level apps. The design patterns of the GOF are divided into three categories. Now let us know about the categories. What is a design pattern? A design pattern is not a finalized design that can be directly translated into code. It is a description or template for solving an issue that may be applied in a variety of contexts. It is not common in the domain of software programming to face the same problems repeatedly. It is also very unusual for these difficulties to arise after the code has already been released. This may be avoided by employing design patterns. Design patterns are a set of pre-existing solutions to common coding issues. If you're in the thick of a project and you're wondering how no one has ever gone through this before, chances are they already have. Design patterns are a recorded version of everything. A design pattern is usually expressed by the following pieces of information. Now let us see what these pieces of information are. Firstly, we have uh, the name. Next, we have intent. Next, we have problem followed by solution consequences. Design patterns can help to accelerate the development process by offering tried and true development paradigms. Consider obstacles that uh, may not have been visible until later in the implementation process for effective software design. Reusing design patterns helps to eliminate minor faults that can lead to significant difficulties. Now let us move on to the next topic which is classification of design patterns. Design patterns are classified into three types, creational, structure and behavior. Each of these has several design patterns associated with it, basically providing a blueprint for quickly solving certain recurring problems. Now let us see what creational design pattern has. A creational design pattern is concerned with object creation and initialization, which guides you with objects that are produced for a particular context. These design patterns are employed to enhance flexibility and reuse the existing code. Below is the various design pattern of creational design. The first one is factory method, then we have abstract method, then we have the builder method, then we have prototype and finally singleton. All right. Factory method, uh, it creates objects with the same interface and allows a class to transfer creation to subclasses. In the abstract method, the designs are based on super factory that generates additional factories. This factory is often referred to as the factory of factories. 
an interface is responsible for establishing a factory or related objects without explicitly declaring their classes in the abstract factory paradigm. Each produced factory can provide objects under the factory pattern itself. Next, we have the builder pattern. This is a pattern for designing complicated things that separate creation and representation. Let us see what prototype is. It allows for the cloning of existing objects without making code dependent on classes. Finally, we have singleton. The singleton design pattern is one of the simplest design patterns in Java. This design pattern is classified as a creational pattern since it gives one of the finest ways to construct an item. This pattern uses single class that is responsible for creating an object while ensuring that only one object is generated. Generated. This class provides a method to access its single object, which may be accessed directly without the requirement to initialize the class's object. Alright, let us move on to structural design pattern. This group of design patterns specializes in class and object composition. Structural design patterns build interfaces and describe techniques to assemble objects to be able to perform something different through inheritance. For example, there is a design pattern that is intended to combine zero or more similar items such as they may be manipulated as one. Another advantage is that you may give a streamlined interface to a large amount of code. Below is the various design pattern of structural design pattern. First we have the adapter pattern followed by bridge, composite, decorator, facade, flyweight and finally proxy. Now let us see what each one of them does in brief. Firstly adapter pattern. It tells you how to modify or adapt an interface to that of another existing class so that conflicting interfaces can coexist. So you can basically merge many interfaces in this design pattern. Next we have the bridge or technique. It is used for separating an interface from its implementation. Followed by composite. The composite pattern is utilized when we need to treat a group of objects in the same manner that we would treat a single object. The composite pattern combines elements in the form of a tree structure to represent both parts and the entire hierarchy. Next we have the decorator pattern. The decorator pattern enables us to add additional functionality to existing objects without changing that structure. This design pattern is classified as a structural pattern since it functions as a wrapper for an existing class. And uh, note one thing guys, this approach decorator class that encapsulates the original class and adds functionality while leaving the class method signature intact. So the original method will be as it is, it will generate a decorator class on top of it. Next we have facade. The facade design conceals the system's complexity and offers a client interface through which the client may access the system. This this design pattern is classified as a structural pattern since it adds an interface to an existing system to hide its intricacies. This pattern employs a single class that offers client required simplified methods and delegates calls to method of existing system classes. Next we have flyweight. Flyweight pattern is mostly used to reduce the number of objects formed as well as to reduce memory footprint and improve speed. When no matching objects is identified, the flyweight pattern attempts to reuse previously existing similar kinds of objects objects by storing them and building a new object. Finally, we have proxy pattern. Uh, inside the proxy pattern, a class represents the functionality of another class. This design pattern is classified as a structural pattern. In the proxy pattern, we build an object with an original object to interface with its capabilities with the outside world. So we have all these design patterns which falls under structural design pattern. Next, we have behavioral design pattern. A behavioral design pattern is concerned with object communication and and how tasks are distributed between objects. Below is the various design patterns of behavioral design pattern. First we have chain of responsibility followed by bridge, interpreter, iterator, mediator, memento observer, state, strategy, visitor and finally we have template method. Alright now let us go through each of them briefly. Chain of responsibility. The chain of responsibility pattern as the name implies produces a chain of recipient objects for a request. Based on the kind of request the design decouples the sender and recipient. This pattern is classified as a behavioral pattern. The command design pattern. The command pattern is a data driven design pattern that is classified as a behavioral pattern. A request is wrapped in an object and sent to the invoker object as a command. The invoker object searches for an object that can handle this command and sends it on to the matching object which basically performs the command for you. Next we have the interpreter method. The interpreter pattern allows you to access language grammar or or expression. This pattern is classified as a behavioral pattern. This pattern entails developing an expression interface that instructs how to comprehend a certain situation. Next we have the iterator pattern. In this pattern you may use the interpreter uh, to evaluate language grammar 
or expression. This trend is known as the behavioral pattern. This pattern requires creating an expression interface that explains how to understand a certain circumstance. Next, we have mediator pattern. This pattern can be used to examine language, grammar or expression. This is referred to as a behavioral pattern as well. Next, we have memento observer and uh, this pattern is used to restore an object state to a previous state. The memento pattern is classified as a behavioral pattern. Next, we have state. In the state pattern, we build objects that represent different states as well as a context object whose behavioral changes as its state object changes. So basically in the state pattern, it is directly related to the object. That is, it is specced to the object and whatever the object state is in that particular instance, its behavioral will change according to it. All right, let us move on to strategy pattern. In the strategy pattern, we build objects that represent numerous strategies as well as a context object whose behavior is determined by the strategy object. The strategy object modifies the context object's execution algorithm. Next, we have visitor pattern. It is used to modify the running algorithm of an element class. As a result, the execution algorithm of the element might change as the visitor changes. Finally, we have the template method. In template pattern, an abstract class exposes defined ways or templates to execute its methods. Its subclasses can override the method implementation as per need, but the invocation is to be in the same way as defined by an abstract class. Alright guys, now let us move on to the benefits and criticisms involving software design patterns. So this will be uh, benefits and criticisms. I have uh, segregated them into pros and cons for you guys. So the first pro is it improves the performance of the system. It solves the bottleneck of the problem. The best design for software, the system can make it possible. It improves the code for writing in a more object-oriented way like inheritance and encapsulation. The development process is sped up with well-designed principles. Clear separation of modules and loosely coupled systems. Reuse things across all applications. Now let us move on to the criticisms or cons of software design patterns. Design patterns need extensive knowledge. Having design patterns available might sometimes lead to individuals feeling that current design patterns can address all the problems. In summary, this can stifle innovation and the urge to seek out new or better solutions. So the first con is teams may suffer from pattern overload. Integrating patterns into a software development process is a human intensive activity. Patterns do not lead to direct code reuse. Patterns are validated by experience and discussion rather than by automated testing. Now that we have our pros and cons clear, let us move on to the next topic that is why do we need design pattern? Design pattern provide a best practice approach to object-oriented software development that makes it easier to design, build, alter, test, and reuse. Best practices and frameworks are provided by these design patterns. Now let us see what they are. The first one is reliable solution. Design patterns give a proven, dependable solution to frequent problem, removing the need for software developer to reinvent the wheel. The next one we have is reusability. Design patterns may be adapted to handle a wide range of issues. They are not limited to a specific issue. Expressive. Design patterns are an elegant solution. So the fourth reason we need a design pattern is it prevents the need for code refactoring. Because the design pattern is already the best solution for to the problem, reworking is unnecessary. All right, uh, moving on to the final reason that we need software design pattern. It reduces the code's size. Each pattern assists software engineers in uh, changing how the system functions without requiring a complete rebuild. Furthermore, being the best option, the design pattern frequently necessitates less code. Now that we have a clear understanding of what software design patterns are, let me move on to the conclusion of its video by by giving out a few final thoughts. Today we have covered what is design pattern, its classification along with some design patterns, its benefits with some major limitations and the reason why we need design patterns in the first place. A design pattern provides a general reusable solution for the common problems that occur in software design. The pattern typically shows relationships and interactions between classes or objects. The idea is to speed up the development process by providing well-tested, proven development or design paradigms. That's all for this this video thank you everyone please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates just a quick info guys if you want to make a career in software engineering then intellipad provides an advanced certification program on software engineering and application development by enict council of iit guwahati and it is taught by iit guwahati professors and industry experts this course is designed to upskill and land your dream job